finally working on the review for last night? Yeah, I was not doing well last night. Well, you and that dude drank a bottle of Jack each, so who could really blame you? Honestly, I can't even remember most of it. I'm just glad I didn't record. You did. What? Yep. What, what did I talk about? What was on the video? Well, it's about 15 minutes of you complaining about St. Laurent's officiating, and then like 160 minutes of what I could best describe as OnlyFans content. Was it good? Dude, it was so good. You're like Jackie Chan in The Drunken Master, but instead of alcohol making you a better kung fuist, kung fu-y, kung, kung fu -er, it just makes you really good at the whole woo! Really? Absolutely not. You danced around to Daft Punk's Around the World on repeat for two and a half hours while just jiggling naked. Hold on, are you doing a bit right now, or did I actually do this? No, you actually did that. Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team, that is a dub! Pretty good dub. Pretty good dub right there. A little shoddy action. Predators, good team. I know they dropped a couple games before this one, but that's a pretty good dub. Some people called me out. Uh, obviously, this is a very late video. This is almost a full day, or going to be a full day after the game actually happened. Uh, <laughs> for a couple of reasons. You have been spared, is what I'm, really what has happened here. Because I said yesterday, I was having some drinks with a buddy of mine to celebrate my recent engagement. I don't have a ring. She didn't buy me a ring. How dare she? I know. But she got a ring. So, engaged. Woot woot. Time to celebrate. And we did. Boy, did we. Don't remember a lot of it. We celebrated, though. I apparently watched the game last night and then went to make a video. Now, look, I don't remember most of this, but here's the thing. I did have technical difficulties. I put on Twitter I had technical difficulties, and people were like, eh, you got too drunk, <laughs> which was accurate because the technical difficulty was plugging my webcam in. It had come unplugged. I don't know how. And I couldn't figure that out. I'm not proud. This is sad. And this is pathetic for a grown man. But hey, that's where we are. So the only reason you don't have a literally blackout low qual talking about this game, saying God knows what, a lot of notes I took were very aggressive towards the referees, mm, deleting most of those. God knows what I would have said, but I didn't. And uh, we really missed out on what could have been a gem. It also could have ended the whole channel. You don't know. We don't know. We just, we don't know. But that's a great freaking win. And that's a great game of hockey. And you wonder, the Predators, they've lost three in a row now. Against mostly good teams. Us, the Avs, and Arizona, but whatever. But before that, they went on a 16-0-2 run that put them firmly in a playoff spot. They are the first wild card currently. And they've also basically locked in this whole, like, we're a wild card team. You probably still don't want to play us in the first round because we look pretty good. The Kings are the only team in the West at this point where you're like, I want to play them, right? Like, what other team in the West are you comfortable being? I would love a matchup with that team. It's really just the Kings and then seven other teams that are damn good. Damn good. The Predators season has been weird because you want to think of them as a good team, but they rank 12th in offense, 16th in defense. Not that scary. They have near the bottom rankings in power play, which is 20th, and penalty kill, which is 26th. Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind of, hey, why are they good? Well, Saros must be having a great season. But Saros has been pretty lackluster with a 907 save percentage through his year and just hasn't been dominating the way we're used to seeing him dominate. Then the light bulb goes off. You look at their record, and then you realize before... That 16-3-2 run, we'll include the last couple of games. They were 27-25-2. They were 500, like 
500, 500. They were not in the picture, man. And then they rip off that really great month and a week, which I don't want to diminish or take anything away from that, but did they just did they just have a really good month? Or are they a pretty good team? I don't know the answer to that. And they become a lot less scary when you start to actually talk that out. Either way, though, they've been a great team for the past month and a half. So you got to consider them what that for now, at least. And the Bruins, the whole time, brought it to them patiently. I thought the Preds had some really great moments in this one. Obviously, Olmark was huge, and you could say he stole that game. I think he... It, this doesn't feel like a steal. This feels like a, the goaltenders battling with each other, and Olmark came out on top. It doesn't feel like the rest of the team had let him down, per se. But a really excellent effort across the board from both teams. The Bruins are going to line up as such. Marchand, Coyle, DeBrusque, Heinen, Zaka, Pasternak, JVR, Geeky, Frederick, Beecher, Boquist, Brazo. Like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. We're going to talk about Brazo, unfortunately. Lindholm, Mack, Lorai, Carlo, Shattenkirk, Peak. Olmark. Those defensive pairings are going to get pretty scattered around too, as Lorai did spend a good amount of time with Shattenkirk, particularly late in the game. Uh, but a lot of a lot of mixing around for that. But let's talk about this game, shall we? Puck drops! Because this game has so little moments to actually speak of until later in it, we get to be a little nitpicky on some stuff, and I get to point some things out with the time that we're going to save. You know, maybe maybe this video isn't 20 minutes long. Probably will be. Eight minutes in. Shattenkirk. He's continuing to do himself zero favors to try to lock into, like, the six to start the playoffs. I'm happy with Shattenkirk, I'm more or less. I think he's been better as the season goes along, and he's going to be a solid seventh D option for us. But there's a moment. The Bruins are gassed. They haven't been able to get a line change in a while. And we get possession in our end. And Shattenkirk is behind the net. And he just whips it around to a, a side of the ice that has zero Bruins on it. It gets intercepted at the point. The Predators start their offensive possession all over again. Shattenkirk had time. He had space. He could look around and make a play or skate it up if he wanted to. No. He just chucked that crap and turned it over. And it's little moments like that, and this is the same thing I have with Lori right now, honestly. It's just too many little moments where you go, that, that's going to be in the back of our net more often than it isn't if you continue to make plays like that. And I don't think Shattenkirk's doing himself a lot of favors, just in general. 8.36 left of the first period. Pasternak's going to go for roughing. We're going to go the penalty kill. We kill it, and we get a McAvoy shorthanded breakaway. Big save. Blocker save by Saros. But we kill it. And 250 left, Shen is going to go for roughing. He got Brazil high in the middle of the ice. I didn't get a great look at this. I'm worried that it's like a wrist issue or something that caught the arm weird. But Brazil would not return. We go in the power play. The power play does not look good or anything like that. A Brazil injury impacts this team much more than I want to believe, honestly. Because you're like, all right, bottom six guy, grinder. But he has been so impactful on the games that he's been a part of that I mean, he's a lock to be in your bottom six if he's healthy right now. An absolute lock. And not a lot of guys in our bottom six can consider themselves true locks, I don't think. I don't think Boquist can. I don't think Beecher can. I think they'll likely be in the lineup game one, but I, I wouldn't call them locks. Uh, I wouldn't call JVR or Lauko locks, obviously. So as a guy who's got signed midway through the season and had to force his way into the lineup like that, He's been awesome. Brazil's been great. I haven't seen any news yet that's a little more firm on what's going on. Hopefully we get that soon. We're going to go to the second period. And this is where my just absolute loathing of uh, Francois Saint Laurent. Uh, I wrote Saint Laurent is a dipshit like eight times. How childish. Uh, accurate though. Holy crap is he bad at his job. 105 in. McAvoy is going to get called with one of the most egregiously bad tripping calls of the year. Awful, awful call. Doesn't matter. We kill it. 541 left. DeBrusque is going to go for one of the worst interference calls we've seen all year. Awful call. That's fine. We kill it. And during the kill, there's good puck movement by the Predators. 
and it unleashes Yossi with a wide open net, just a pass that comes across the crease. There's some contact with Olmark that knocks him down. It is a wide open net for Yossi, and he goes barring out. That was my puck don't lie moment, honestly, because we didn't, I mean, these, these penalties, we just didn't deserve to be on the kill for them. Either way, 238 left. Smith is going to go for high sticking. We're going to do a power play. Power play doesn't do anything once again. Third period starts. How are you feeling? This is genuinely something I want answered. How are you feeling going to the third? Because personally, I thought that was 40 minutes of great hockey. They're doing the little things well. There's highs and lows. There's mistakes being made. I'm not saying it was a perfect game, but I thought the structure was there. I thought Omar was playing great. It's been a while since I feel like a goalie really really grabbed a game and said, this one's mine. And I, I just feel like Olmark was at that level for this one. And has been at that level, actually, for a few games. But this really felt like he took a grip on this game. But were you confident? Because the way this team's playing lately, I went into that third kind of confident. Which is, I, I wouldn't say something that's been normal all year. I, I would say there's been a lot of, I, there'd be a lot of pushback to that. Especially in close games. Because you sit there and go, all right, even if we get the first goal, we're going to give it right back. Are we going to be able to close the game out? Are they going to score on six on five? Like all those thoughts come to mind. 827 left of the period. Laura is going to go for hooking. Here we go. Penalty kill. Under 10 minutes left. This is massive. And not only are we killing it wonderfully, but with 20 seconds left of the penalty kill, Olmark wraps around his net to collect a puck that got dumped in, and he chucks it down the boards. I'm pretty sure he gets an assist on this play, because as he flings this up the left boards, Marchand is going to go all the way up to the offensive zone to win the race to it, and basically stops on that left point, collects the puck, and quickly chips it over to the slot while Coyle is streaking. Short-handed, breakaway, and bar... Downski, top glove, flawless execution, 56 points on the season. That is tying a career high for Coil, and that's a 1 0 lead with a shorthanded goal from the man himself. Oh my God, Charlie Coyle. What a. He's been so good this year, especially after we talked shit about our centers all the way leading up to this season. Not even like talking crap about them, but just every time we said, well, we don't have a true number one center, which we don't, uh, or we're not even sure if we have a top six center on the roster, it's still talking crap about Coyle. Like, you, there's strays. You don't mean to hit them with them, but you're hitting them. Bet you were afraid of giving it back, though. No one's that confident with the Bruins right now. Everyone's a little bit gun shy when it comes to the last few minutes of the game with a one goal lead. And with 2.42 left, the defense. Doing a great job. We're really limiting chances. We're breaking the puck out of our zone well. And we break it out once again. And Pasta's just going to do the hustle thing. Down the right wall. Speeds into the offensive zone. Leading somewhat of a 3-on-3 three -three with Zaka as your trailer. Pasta is going to chuck it across the slot to Heinen. Who Heinen goes too deep, right? He gets keeps his forward momentum. Can't settle the puck. Can't get the puck on net. So the whole defensive structure just turns to kind of pin him towards the wall as he's skating a little bit too far past a real angle. And for some reason, no one picks up Zaka. Heinen just chucks it right back into the slot where Zaka is alone. Saros had sold out on the Pasta pass, so it's a wide open net. That's 2-0. And Pasta, with a minute and 24 seconds left, is going to get the 110-foot empty net goal, and it's 3-0. And that's your final. Not a lot of game notes there, right? There's not a ton to speak of. But the actual game notes are more about uh, St. Laurent being a dipshit. Sorry. No, I, anyway. Things that this game has, has really done for me. First of all, Olmark has a vice grip on the starting job. And if Swayman's play doesn't at least pick up a little bit, he might not even do the rotation this year. And no one would be able to blame Monty. Everyone would go... Swayman, who, I'll give you some numbers. Over the last five games, or five starts for Olmark, he has six goals allowed on 140 shots, good for a 942 save percentage through that stretch, right? Swayman, during his last five games, has 17 goals allowed on 120 shots and an 858 save percentage. Now look, you can make any argument you want about 
the level of of uh, danger that each shot is, and is Swayman facing a harder workload, not a ha heavier workload, but like a more difficult one? There's a conversation to be had there. I don't think it's a valid one. I think Omar's playing way better. I think this game showed that. And if Swayman doesn't at least get back to where he should be, he's going to get left out altogether, which is going to have more trickle effects as we go. I don't expect Swayman to stay in this rut. I expect him, by the time the playoffs to roll around, him to be feeling pretty good about his game. But he is running out of runway there. The Brazil injury we've talked about, it's impactful. And we don't know what Pat Maroon's going to look like, but the, the preference was... Pat Maroon comes in and bumps a guy like Lauco out or someone along those lines, right? Uh, maybe JVR. Uh, guys who just aren't bringing a ton right now. You certainly don't want to have to rely on Maroon to replace Brazo, who's kind of in the heart and soul of the bottom six lately. So tough, tough injury. Let's see how it goes. As Bruins have been pretty healthy this recent run, so... You know injuries are going to happen. It just kind of sucks. Anyway, last thing. This team is doing something that we really needed to see. They've won three of their last four, and they're closing games out. And they're doing it well. Now look, Olmark made some huge saves. He only have to, had to make one save in the last two minutes of this one. They only allowed one shot. The team is getting a better handle on six on five. They are closing games out stronger. They're building on their leads. Like this is this is a good development. We got to see it continue, but this is huge. This matters. I, I was really pumped to see the way they finished this one because this was the perfect type of game with the way the Predators had played comeback kids in so many games over the last two months. This was the perfect game for the Bruins to show once again, like, ah, we just can't hold on to that lead at the end. And instead... They were like, no, we've, we've figured this out. We can do this. Now, look, teams are going to come back on us at times. It happens. It happens to everybody. Obviously, the Bruins have been egregiously bad at it this season, holding those those late leads. The past couple weeks, that hasn't been the truth. They've been finishing games. It matters, and I'm, I'm pumped about it. That's like We are so good at keeping games close, which means we're giving ourselves chances to win. If we can also hold leads in the third... The sky's the limit, man. What I should be a coach, right? What a stupid thing to say. Hey, if we could if we could keep games close and also win them in the third, this team would be pretty good. I think they would be. I think they'd be pretty good. <laughs> anyway, guys, that does it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. Um, I'm getting out of my slump. This past month has been a complete shit show for this channel, but we're getting back into the groove and getting geared up for a playoff run, man. Here we go. Go Bees! Go Bees! And once again, it's time to give shout-outs to those who are keeping the lights on for this channel. We got a shout-out our top-line tier to start. Let's start with Erica Pulley, Colin Nolan, The Bugman, Brock Nope, Han Slomo, Coach D, The Atomic Lizard, Bradley Johnson, Aaron Adams, just Aaron, Darren Woodbury, Brett Arney, Pinsent, and Nick Zatrulo. You guys and gals are absolute studs. But we can't mention the studs without mentioning the Stallions, our all-star tier high-quality inspectors, John Kirk, Jacob Pratt, Heil E. Coyote, Adam Ella, Bruin Smash, Joel, Abraxion, De Kingery, The Only Newts, A Tasty Snack, Dutes42, and Jeremy. I can't say thank you enough. I appreciate all the support. Your absolute legends, stallions, whatever great adjective we can work in here. Thank you, everyone, from the depths of my heart, and go bees!